It's uh, September 13th, 2022, 7.30 p.m. I'm gonna call the uh, special meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission to order. Members present, myself, uh, Bob Shabbat, Andy Marco, Doug Roberts, Rebecca Sanosti, and Joseph Hall. All right, first thing on the agenda tonight, nothing uh, on uh, C, so item D, public hearing, PZ-22-15. Special permit application for alcohol sales, 12 column turnpike. It's the uh, new flat pennies kitchen, applicant Laura Paneo, owner, Willington Station LLC. Where's the uh, applicant here? Yes. Okay. Uh, the paper on the front here? Yeah. Okay. Oh, you can come um, up. Hi, everybody. I'm Laura Pineo, um, the new owner or the owner of New Flat Pennies Kitchen. Um, I'm here with my family tonight, my husband Todd, my son Will, my daughter Sam, we're a family owned business. Uh, really excited to be in the town and everybody's been so welcoming and so nice to us. Um, anyways, I'm here tonight to ask you all for permission to move forward with my application to State of Connecticut for a liquor license. Um, we just planned to add dinner and you just be able to offer just wine, beer, and maybe just a small bar um, to complement our meals. We're in no means going to be a bar. Um, when we're done serving dinner, we're going to be done serving alcohol as well. I mean, I don't want to be there any later than nine o'clock. Um, on Wednesdays and Thursdays, probably serve dinner until eight, but Friday and Saturday until 8 30. Uh, we're very family oriented. I don't want the late night crowd. Um, our bar area is very small percentage. I believe it's 19 seats. The whole restaurant itself seats 82. Um, so I appreciate your time and consideration regarding our application. And uh, please feel free to ask me any questions that you may have. Yes. So would the bar area be with like with like for breakfast where people sit at the counter there? Yes. Like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Divided. And this is just for beer and wine? Uh, probably just. Uh, I don't want to offer full, full range of alcohol, but a you know, limited bar. Um, but like I said, not, not this huge, <clears throat> that kind of atmosphere. And it's just variety. Questions? Question? Comments, uh, Sandy Marco, just the only things I see that would apply or the standout or is uh, the 500 feet, which it clearly seems to me, you said it can't be within 500 feet of, of Barrett's. Uh, 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 secondary school, primary school, place of worship, that would apply. The only part that, that interests me, and I don't really know how it applies, so maybe we can talk about that. Uh, no restaurant shall serve alcoholic beverages unless it contains no less than 24 seats, which is fine. Mm -hmm. The applicant is saying that they're reserved to 19 seats. That matters. I was going to say they have what, 68, I think you said. Yes. For any restaurant containing a bar, tap or of so such space shall contain no more than 50% of the square foot. So I think those, all of those are met. So yeah, I don't see any. Those are the two things that I think would apply mm -hmm. to this particular application. And I don't see any conflict with those. It's under section 14. I don't see any conflict with that. Yeah, here's the way of so. Yeah, right. No, I, yeah, so, uh, I, I guess. Yeah. What are we trying to say? Though? Well, for any restaurant paying a bar, such space of contain those. So you can't have more than half of it can be the bar, I guess is what we're trying to say. Is that what we're trying to say? Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Why would we say that? Why did we care? When that was, was 96. So it's not a <laughs> fire. Care about that. Yeah. So they're actually serving food. Probably. So maybe so they're actively yeah. yeah. serving food, but okay. it's not a full blown. Yeah. yeah. No, no, yeah. No, I wonder why whoever said it in 96 it wasn't me. So. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's the rule. Okay. That's so I have this problem. Any further questions from the commission? All I can say is they did a great job renovating. Yeah, I agree. How's uh, how's uh, how's business been so far? Um, pretty good. Pretty Terrible. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the landlord right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everybody, I can't say how nice everybody's yeah. been and just walk in and like, wow, you know, thank you for being here. Just uh, feel really good for you know being here. It took us a while, but. Liberty. Yeah. <laughs> 
our our time being found, so everyone's been really wonderful. Good things take time. Nice to hear. Yeah, yes. yeah absolutely. So a lot of nice people so far. So that's really nice. Okay, great. Now that uh, the commission, I guess, is done asking questions, uh, public, any public comment on this? Uh, hi, I'm Michael Mazzo. I'm the property owner at uh, Wilmington Station, 12, 14, and 16 Mountain Jeff I just wanted to show my support for Flat Penny's Kitchen and them growing and developing uh, their business. And, and uh, they've been great to deal with. It's been a, been a long road for for uh, everyone uh, getting it all together, but uh, dealing with them has been wonderful. And I believe that uh, not only the true restaurant professionals, uh, but uh, you know they've been honest people and, and uh, great to work with. And I believe that they'll uh, only bring uh, about added value to the town. Further comments? Yes, Ralph. Uh, Ralph Tillis, 47 Village Hill Road. My only question, I, I was on the commission when the original restaurant was open, uh, back on, and there was an issue concerning uh, seating and septic capacity. And so my only question is, has the health department signed off on this? Yes. I, I have no real problem with, with, I have no problem at all with uh, the application for a liquor license. Fire marshal's been through, uh, health department had to sign off. Um, she will be back and she had a second stolen. The staff takes it to fully uh, renovate, upgrade their not renovated, 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 Hi, I'm Melissa Miller, 55 Mahaliak Road. I just wanted to say it's great to have a new, another little restaurant in town. Breakfast was wonderful. The service was great. Um, and I just came on just to support them and say, hopefully they can get just a little small liquor license. I know a lot of people like to have like a mimosa with breakfast or, you know, I think um, I'm looking forward to having a new dinner place in town too. I just wanted to say thanks so much um, for taking a chance on our town. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Uh, not see anybody. All right. So we want to make a motion that I move we close the public hearing for PZ twenty two fifteen. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> All right, the way this works is we're going to move into the other public hearings. So, you know, you will come up under new business. So. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Uh, item B, PZ-22-11, special permit application for expansion of home occupation. Had propane delivery at 163 Ruby Road. Applicant owner, David uh, Litwin. Basically, family oriented business. Septic works great in the warm weather, but the older winter is a little toxic. So, in balance out business, I was looking to add propane delivery to residential prices. And what's the details on that? How, how big a tank or how is this going to be done? Basically, just you bought the trucks go get filled up in the morning, go dump them out of various locations. It's kind of the same as the septic tank. Start emptying the How many gallons does the bobtail hold? Uh, 3,000 is what I'm looking for. I did bring some regulation, it took me a while to find for separation distance based on tank sizes. It was really related to fixed location tanks. In terms of trucks, I couldn't find anything for separation distance between buildings because the service that came from the building, you might be five or ten feet from the building with a truck in the back. So there's, have to up there's more. so there's no storage tanks whatsoever on that. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see the regulation we have. I don't know how many. Is 
It's all right. So this is more for tanks, what, what we're looking more. at here. Okay. Because the only thing I can really find really is the All right. Mike, you, you're aware of anything? No, if so trucks. when, when um, yeah. we had spoken about his application, my takeaway was that he's he's asking for approval to to conduct a, a different component of, of the operation on the property, but he's not storing fuel on the trucks. The intent is he picks it up, delivers it, and the truck comes home at the end of the day empty. So that there's a different truck that'll be parked on the property beyond the septic vehicles that he's got there now, but it's not a situation where he's going to, and he'll correct me if I'm wrong, he's going to go down, fill the truck up and deliver over the course of five days. And every night he'll come home with a massive storage of, of LP in, in the truck. Um, and am I mistaken? Okay. So we're not getting into a lot of those other safety criteria because it's essentially parking an empty, an empty can. Questions for the commission. Public comment on this one. Yes, Ralph. Sir, Ralph to the forty-seven votes. So, Ralph, um, how does this square with prohibited uses six point oh one point oh nine? My read of that is he needs a special exception from the DBA. Natural propane or the gas manufacturer by other than a public utility and natural propane or the gas storage is the principal use. Oh, that's the principal use. How do you read that? Yeah, this is essentially he's just parking commercial vehicles on the property. There's no manufacturer so distribution that's storage. That truck may come back with no liquid fuel propane on it, but it will not be empty. will be in the tank in a gas form. And what happens if the truck comes back and it's not empty of liquid propane? It's going to be parked on the property. So how do you interpret this? My principal use is the key word. It's the 60109? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that the commission could, I mean, obviously, if the use is ultimately established, it'll have to be inspected by the fire marshal and have to be, he'll have to meet any standards related to that. The commission eight could. Hmm? There's eight different regulatory agencies that are involved. So um, we could make the approval very explicit in that the, the operation being allowed is the parking of vehicles, essentially. He's, he's conducting an operation from the property. Um, but just as he does with his septic company, he's not disposing of what he picks up in his trucks every day on the property. You could, you could put a condition of approval on it that the trucks need to return to the property free of liquid propane. Um, yes, I do want but, you know, I... I I don't know how you answer that there may be something in, in, in gas form. No, it's very possible there's going to be something comes back if you don't expense at all. That's, that's, and I'm not an expert yeah. to know what the, the risk is. I mean, if somebody has a, an oil tank or a, a, a propane tank that's set next to their house to fuel a generator, for those, those are things I don't know. There aren't regulations related to them, um, but you could certainly put a condition on the, the activity so that nothing, no storage, the vehicles had to be empty when on the property. Um, it, that makes you more comfortable. Well, it's a special exception regardless, right? Yeah. Well, it says except to storage for distributing, distributing purposes and the certificate of LPG may be permitted as a special exception. I'm not familiar with Connecticut General Statutes 541 part. Two. You said two bobtails? Yes, sir. 
uh, you're probably going with regular bobtails. Yeah. So they hold like 2,800 gallons. Yeah. So we've got, okay. <clears throat> we have to 600 gallons. Here, probably, yeah. Yeah. It would, it would be impractical to come back empty on any given day. I mean, there's no way to yeah. manage that. So you're going to need a million packs. So there's going to be something left yeah. to, 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 to parse it out so you're always coming back a little empty. So be regular. So, uh, and FBA 58, I think, is what, guideline, is what the guideline for storage close to buildings, but it looks like you have enough room to put them there, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I do have some data here. I'd rather not have Okay, you got, um, got plenty of property. The health and safety data, this is based on PA. Well, let's see. The source of ignition and death is essentially related to propane, uh, it's dwarfed by cooking material, wire insulation, and the day for lots of work coming to us. People home chemo system. So you mean away from ignition sources, away from well, the owned buildings. It wouldn't be any near anyone else's buildings. Mm -hmm. South. Um, and again, I don't know what those state regs say, but it's in the public record, so it's yeah. Something we can look at the state regs are obviously non-negotiable. He meets them. Or right. he doesn't get approved. Right. We the only other thing that I can do, which obviously we can't solve tonight, would be to try to ping someone in the fire department or the fire marshal to get a sense of, you know, from a fire marshal perspective, would there be anything that he'd be interested in, anything that he would look for, and our recommendations. I, I could I, we, I could have what that. Is <laughs> what is heritage fuel? What is that? What are their right there? They have storage. They have trucks out their site. Right? Is that just oil though, Heritage? They do propane. No, I don't think they just do oil. oil. Yeah. yeah. Oil, propane, I don't think there's a big difference. In, like, there's more BTUs in oil than there is in propane. So is is 6.01.09 except that the storage for distributing purposes is storage. They're referring to storage in a bulk tank and you're that's the way coming I out of it. Yeah. Seems you differentiate between that and bobtail truck, which yeah, is, you know, they, yeah. those are stuck around to deliver. Right. Like it said, the Wellington Fire Marshal yeah. already commented on it. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He, yeah, they, he had the conversation, but it was with the applicant. So I haven't spoken to him. I don't know what they specifically right. talked he about. He did convert to the uh, he Okay. I, he must have talked to. Yeah. Did he talk to you? I don't remember. I, yeah, we don't, we don't have anything in the Which files. Which fire alarm? It's actually the first one going down the line. Yeah, I, let me see, I, I did not speak to him, but uh, let me see if we've got something in the file. But again, similar to a building code, we're looking at the fire code and it's, if it needs to meet a specific criteria sure. and he doesn't, then he doesn't move forward. Right, right. Um, there's right. not a lot of arbitrary. Right. Um, let's see. I, I do have I do have some something that looks like a, an email chain that was included with the fire marshal, well, former fire marshal. Um, we have a new fire marshal as of uh, July one, so um, it would have been the previous. So I mean, I can certainly connect with that with the new fire marshal and get if there's any additional comments that he has. Um, I don't think you know. Be anything vastly different, but it looks like that discussion happened right around December. I'm not trying to. Okay, so I'm going to see if there's additional public comments okay. here, and then I'm probably, we'll probably continue this. That way, you know, it gives time to do that and then we go from there. Any, any additional comments on this? Yes. Hi, uh, James Marshall, 46 Fisher Hill Road. Um, just a question is this seems to be more of a transient 
you know, short term storage scenarios or any uh, stipulation in the application of the quantity of trucks that can be stored on site. No. So he has there's two we spent that. We spent 2,800 gallon bobtails. And <laughs> supposedly empty, you know, when they come back, which you know, we're not going to that. We were, that, that'd be unreasonable, but all right. Thank you. Thank you. And the regulation goes up to Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Todd Listen, and this is my fiance, Maureen Lee. We, we own and reside at 41 Cosgrove Road. We also own uh, 45 Cosgrove Road, which is approximately a mile from uh, the Lipman's. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to thank Chris and Mike for their professionalism during our conversations in the past few days. And to the board, thank you in advance for the opportunity to speak. And your patience for my presentation is a bit lengthy and a bit necessary. Uh, before I begin my presentation, um, I'd like to comment on Mr. Litwin's uh, comment that he has over 80 acres. By regulations, the home occupation permit has to be upon the residencies, the residency, not his joining property, which he doesn't have at 80 acres to apply this business to. The home resident is on 11 acres, in which it's all jammed in a 100 by 100 foot area, all of these trucks, all of these uh, trucks. Um, Maureen and I have, are here tonight with two topics and several concerns with Dave Lipman's application for a special permit for animal septic business to expand to an additional business that delivers propane as well to his current home occupation permit, which both appear to intertwine each other. I'd like to fast forward a copy of my presentation to the board. Tom Wreckers, Mr. Litwin applied for a home occupation permit for Alamo Septic on 11-14-2012. Upon said application filed in the town records and signed by planning zoning agent Susan Jorgensen, it's clearly written and initialed by Dave Litwin that no outside evidence of business, truck not to be visible from road or by adjacent property, which not has been the practice for over six years. Also within town records is a signed document dated 11 14 2012 from David Littman himself, stating that there will be no evidence of the existence of a home occupation, occupation, which has not been a practice also for over six years. I'd like to submit those documents to the mention, uh, as mentioned to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Pursuant to 11.01.01.01 Wellington, Connecticut zoning regulations, section three definitions of a home occupation, it appears that Avro segment does not meet the criteria and is in compliance within the definition of a home occupation for business involves, but not limited to uh, Abroseptic as employees that are non occupants of the residency property. Uh, during the course of the years, if you go back on the internet, you can read reviews, uh, which are stated within uh, his own site also, that there, there's a list of at least six employees that were not supposed to be associated with this business. B. Uh, there are commercial trucks such as, such as two septic back trucks that contain and haul human waste, one box truck, one dump truck, one backhoe, one excavator, one large trailer for hauling such equipment associated with the septic business, which has, which has been in clear violation of the zoning laws for that it is in total view uh, up from the road. Pursuant to regulation 11.01.01.01, 
The home occupation shall have no employees who are not permanent residents of the subject dwelling in which agroseptic is in non-compliance because David Litwin has employees who are not permanent residents of said dwelling. I'd like to pass forward to the board from the internet for agroseptics are required acquired from the real yellow pages with comments of David Littman's employees who are not permanent residents of the residential building. And I'd also like to state that Admiral Septic's non-permanent employee has worked on my rental property in 2020, which is against zoning regulations. Admiral Septic is located at 163 Ruby Road in an R80 residential area and does not appear to be in compliance of operating under the definition of Section C of the Home Occupation Permit, nor does he appear to be in compliance to what is a very misleading description of what is associated with Admiral Septic's daily operations within his set application dated November 14, 2012, which is on file with the Planning and Zoning. Admiral Septic is in non-compliance with Regulation 11.01.02, regulations and subsections, as his vehicles associated with Admiral Septic are commercial vehicles are parked on the property in clear view from the road, on the side of the garage, in front of the garage, in front of the house, parallel with the road, and between the bushes in the front of the house. I would like to pass forward to the board photos acquired from Google Earth and other realtor sites and photos taken on September 7th of 2022, that is this year, that physically display such. Going to Connecticut, to Willington, Connecticut zoning regulations, section 11, special regulations 11.01, .01, home occupations, home occupations as defined in section three definitions of these regulations shall be permitted as an accessory use to those zones set forth in section five use regulations of these regulations subject to insurance of certificate zoning compliance by the zoning agent and special permit by the commission in accordance with the following standards and criteria. Pursuant to regulations 11.01.01, home .01, occupation by certificate of zoning compliance, the zoning agent may issue a zoning uh, compliance in accordance with section 20-04, administration and, and enforcement in these regulations for home, home occupations, which meet the following criteria. Pursuant to re Regulation 11.01.01.02, the home occupation shall involve no outside storage, no display of goods or material or signage or other evidence of the existence of a home occupation located outside or visible, detectable from outside of the dwelling of which Admiral Section again appears to be in non-compliance by photos presented to the board. I'd like to state that the photos <clears throat> That are already have been passed forward to <coughs> David Littman's non compliance of regulation 11.01.01.02. In regards to the home occupation for Admiral Septic, it appears that activity is non compliance, that the home occupation should not have been issued in an R, a residential R80 neighborhood, and it appears the pyramid should have been a special permit from the beginning. I would like to ask the board to investigate the operations of Admiral Septic business doing an on-site inspection to ensure that all zoning regulations are being followed with total compliance and non-compliance issues be corrected and resolved immediately to totally reflect the zoning regulations of resident R80 neighborhood in Willington, Connecticut. The second, the second topic of concern is the application for home occupation by special permit by operating Admiral Septic business and to add a proposed protein business to this residential R80 neighborhood. I'd like to pass forward to the board a copy of Dave Littman's plan site submitted to planning and zoning labeled by Dave Littman himself, site plan for current septic business and proposed business, great propane business. Pursuant to regulations 11.01, .02.02, .02, the home occupation shall be clearly secondary, subordinate, and incidental to the resident 
residential use of the property and it shall not impair the residential character of the premises in neighborhood. Accessory buildings may be used for occupations provided that other requirements of these sections are met. Except for permitted signs, there will be no visible evidence or indication of the operation from outside of any building or structure used for the home occupation. For example, there shall be no display windows, outside storage or display of goods, outside work areas, banners, lights, or other devices to attract public attention. The commission may require that the required parking be screened for the use of fencing or evergreen planting. A, the residential use of the property and character of the neighborhood has been and will continue to be impaired and impact the storing and parking of commercial vehicles in clear view of the public as photos have shown with such as two septic back trucks that can contain and haul human waste, one box truck, one dump truck, one backhoe, one excavator, one large trail for hauling such equipment, as these are pieces of equipment associated with Admiral Septic, and then two propane delivery trucks and one box truck is proposed to be added to the existing equipment already parked in clear sight from Ruby Road, which currently is in non-compliance with the Admiral Septic business vehicles. B, Within the 624-22 site plan for proposed septic business and propane business, there is no existing screening or proposed screening for employee vehicles parked on the parked or the commercial equipment just mentioned. C, non-permanent residents, employees of Admiral Septic have been parking between the bushes in front of the house on a, on a proposed gravel driveway that runs parallel to Ruby Road. D, there is no current evergreen screening as stated on the site plan. There are only weeds and vines that are also absent nine months of the year. E, I'd like to refer to the roadside photos passed forward earlier and to pass forward more photos acquired by Google Earth that show there is no evergreen screening to block and hide the evidence of a home occupation business, which is required, which leads me to state that the information presented within the site plan by David Littman appears to be entered with unclean hands. Pursuant to regulations 11.01.03, information required in addition to any requirements of section 13, special permit exception for home occupation by special permit or section 15, administration and enforcement for home occupation by certificate of zoning compliance. The following shall be submitted to the committee or zoning agent as the case may be to determine the compliance of this section. Pursuant to regulations 11.01.03.01, a detailed statement describing all pertinent aspects of the proposed activity and acknowledging the requirements of this section. A, no such information is on record or displayed on the 6-24-2022 site plan. Therefore, the requirement does not appear to satisfy the request uh, that the boarding commission or zoning agent uh, requires. Pursuant to regulation 11.01.03.02, an accurate, accurately drawn plot plan to scale or a sketch with pertinent dimensions depicting property lines, structure locations, access drives, parking spaces, screening, existing and proposed, um, any other pertinent features. A, the site plan has no drawn to scale or required by, re, by uh, regulations or no legend. B, parking spaces and screening for existing and proposed vehicles is not accurately drawn, which is required by regulations. C, site plan shows trucks to be parked on the side of the garage, 25 feet from the road with no screening. Such park parking would be in non-compliance to the regulations that would be in clear view from Ruby Road. D, all present, equip, all present equipment is in view from the road to date with no screening or fencing, which is in non-compliance to the regulations as noted within the photos provided. E, it appears upon the site plan that the proposed and current business operations and parking located at 163 Ruby Road home occupation permit overruns onto the adjacent non-resident property of 187. But clarity is not absolute. Do there is no depicting property lines drawn on the site plan to that is required by regulations. 
Basically, the proposed site plan contains a lot of nothing and it appears to be deliberately drawn to deflect requirements and is presented with unclean hands. Presented to regulation 11.01.02, home occupation by, by a special permit, any home occupation which does not meet the preceding requirements for a certificate of zoning shall require the issuance of a special permit by the commission in, ad in addition to the requirements of section 13, special permit exceptions of the regula regulations compliance with the following terms and conditions. I would like to request the board to investigate Admiral's septics past nine compliance issues that have been presented to the board and verify that all zoning regulations and requirements will be clearly defined and followed in accordance to the regu regulations before the board considers granting a special permit and an additional business to be added to a residential R80 neighborhood. In closing, the site plan and information within the application submitted by David Litwin does not appear to meet the criteria of information that is required within the aforementioned zoning regulations to be considered, nor is Admiral Septic in compliance with the current home occupation permit for David has non-resident employees working with them while being in non-compliance for not meeting the requirements for there is there will be no visible evidence of indication of the operation of the home occupation business. Admiral parks their business vehicles in an R80 neighborhood in which some of the vehicles have a business name on it in front of their house and garage on the side of the garage and along the side of the garage in which all is in plain view and visible for all passing through traffic. And now they want to add two propane trucks and a box truck in a residential R neighborhood area. At this time, I would request that the board deny David Litwin's application for a special home permit until all required regulations have been satisfied, such as a site plan with pertinent details, business activities are clearly defined, and recommendations from the board to propose changes to ensure the residents of Willington will not be subjected anymore to knowing that there is an existing home occupation business as noted within the regulations. I would also request that the zoning board investigate the non-compliant issues of admin septic that have been currently going on um, in regards to non-compliance of the regulations of trucks and equipment being visible while being parked in plain sight without any fencing or screening. I applaud Dave for attempting to enhance and expand his business to provide for his family and quality of life but that should not be achieved at the price of other Wellington wet residents. We live in a small town that prides itself on the character of the town and the rules and regulations are put in, protect, in place to protect the town and its residents. Everyone must follow those rules and regulations to deserve the quality of life for all and no one is exempt and honesty must be applied and followed in an honor system while attempting to live in harmony. Uh, thank you very much for listening. And I apologize for the length of this, but it was necessary. Further public comments. All right. Uh, questions from the commission? I think there's some things that need to be looked into. From, okay. uh, so I, I recommend we continue this give us time to take a look at some of these that were brought up and uh, go from there. Anything you want us to specifically? Yeah, I think we'd, uh, maybe a uh, uh, staff could have a look at the site, see what's going on down there. Okay. In the meantime, talk to the fire marshal about the other item. Uh, you know, just see if the, yeah, this is out of uh, character with a resident uh, home occupation. Before I continue, the applicant have anything further to say? Okay. Um, I would like to see a simple application of the law. Because to date, I've only had positive reviews. I'm rather disappointed in this gentleman for right almost 10 years not to stop and ask questions. I would like to also state 
if you have any control of that directly, you need to go as seven four. Because again, the neighbors do all of our dialogue to their father in the right world. Again, another practice would be we all drive by every weekend to the dog. If you guys have any other concerns, I certainly will. But all people come out and go back home to the same one. I'll be happy to watch the neighbors to the same smell. And these people all try to make a living. I'm not really sure why this particular excessively in control issue came up to head in a zoning meeting as opposed to from preaching directly, but we can address all the issues. I, I have one uh, further question, Mike. Are there any complaints on record in this business that you are aware of? Not not in the last couple of years. Okay. Right. Okay. Also, uh, basically, when I went to and got through with our two notices, she indicated and visited the site. There were no issues. And we had an advertising that's fixed, like signs you'll see on the street. We're not approved, and I did not go for no initial thing. But any advertising that's on the site of the truck, which is also appropriate for DOT, is more acceptable. I'm going to go and start regulating what is on the side of the vehicle. Again, we supply that to every single owner, if you're a company, or a wife, and we'll take it for it. We'll take it for it. Good morning, Lil Cholly. Good morning, Lil Cholly. 41 Pasco Road. Um, my concern or my comment is we would not have brought this for it. We have also used Admiral Septic for one of our rental properties. We would not have brought this for it had we not, had we known prior that this was a home-based business with these requirements and guidelines. We respect the fact that David Litwin is trying to make, you know, livestock for his family. However, it needs to be fair for everyone if you're having a home-based business, it needs to reside in your primary residence, in your primary residence lot. So as this is being brought forward to expand on it, we have recently researched it. And this is why we're just coming to the table with this. Because prior, we didn't have knowledge that it was a home-based business. So we had no concerns about it. We could see it if we were in disgust um, that the vehicle is there. It's, it, it has a stench. We've had it at our lots to septic work so we know it does have a stink we don't drive by his home to roll our window down but i don't know if it's offensive to other people and me other people may not, may not even know that it's a home-based business you're seeing commercial vehicles in a residential area you may think that he has a commercial permit however if it's a home-based permit that's a whole different story may i add to that david himself acknowledge he has 80 acres, which he does. He's got a nice chunk of land over there. If you review his print, where he's parking the trucks 25 feet from the road in an area which isn't to scale, but I'm gonna guess it's maybe 80 feet by 125 feet deep. You're talking all of this equipment by the road. He's stating that there's evergreen blockage, which there is not. Uh, there is no fencing. There is no screening. Everything is positioned right next to the house. I'm driven by where the septic sucker is between the trees against his front porch, almost, or in front of, or in front of the, um, the garage. It's unacceptable. On that primary residence, he has, a, I believe, about 11 acres. Why not put it in the back? And that's what asking for a suggestion to do. If he meets the regulations, that's fantastic for him and his family. But the residents should not have to look at it. And Willington is noted. Nobody shows up for meetings at the select meetings or anything unless it personally affects them. They just grin and bear it and go through it. It's a small town. We understand certain things get picked and looked to the side. And just because David has been called out for his discrepancies that violate the zoning laws, doesn't mean the other one should get away with it either. If David has his order or off is instructed to conform, his argument in Zen is why don't those other businesses have to conform as well? Not because they're violating the laws, gives him the ability to violate the laws. He got caught. 
It's that simple. He's trying to expand. If you put everything behind as required out of sight, we would not be here tonight. And by the prints, by you'll see what he has, everything is directly on the road in clear view. I have presented pictures during the winter. There is no screenage. I presented pictures from last week. He's got the hood of his truck flipped open working on it. He's got the hood of the sucker flipped open working on it. It's all visible. By the print, there's no definition of where he's parking, where he's not. He has proposed by the print to put the two propane trucks along the side of the garage, ready to scoot out into the, into the yard. It's all in clear view. Adjustments should be made to his 80 acres if he's gonna put it on that, but then he has to apply for a permit that 187 is a part of the business. If not, he has 11 acres, put it over the hill out of sight as required by the town regulations. It's a very simple fix. All right, thank you. Further uh, further comments? I have, I have a question. Um, sorry, I believe I may have just heard, I don't see it written, but did you say that the property is not contiguous to the 80 acres? He owns several properties, but they're all they're all adjacent to one. They're, they're adjacent all bordered to each other. Okay. But by regulations, it states. That's why. No, I just I just was okay. But I think of contiguous. I mean, I yes. was thinking that they're not separate. They, they are. They they are not separated. No, they're they, they border one another. Okay. Right. That, that's that's all. I'm just clarifying that. I'm going to uh, go ahead. Uh, a quick question. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to exist elsewhere in town. But in the of this application, there's no notice to a large part. Is it acknowledgement or is that no longer necessary? They need to go out the certificate of mail so we don't get the green cards back. Yeah, but it was performed and you did put the sign up. I know that. Okay. Uh, all right, I'm going to uh, recommend we continue this one until. Yeah, I just want to make sure we're clear on when you want to. Yeah, we're not going to be able to do the 20th. I'm, I'm not sure if we're talking to the fire marshal and some of these other things, I can turn it yeah. around in seven days. Yeah, so we can go to, that'll be the first meeting in October. Right. When is that? What's the date? October 4th. Yeah, we can move it there. All right, so I'm going to make a motion that we continue public hearing uh, PZ-22, uh, no, PZ-22-11 special permit application for the expansion of home occupation to add propane delivery at 163 Ruby Road, applicant owner David Litwin to our October 4th meeting. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All, right. All right, so that's continued in October 4th. All right, this next one here, PZ-22-13, it's a text amendment application pertaining to the modifications to the strategic development zone, section 12.15, applicant James Marshall. All right, in light of PZ-22-10 being open still, I strongly recommend that we continue this. I, 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 as the applicant, I request the same. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Just yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, not that go, no, go ahead. You're probably going to say the same thing I was. So. Um, yeah, so thank you for yeah. uh, thank you for hearing all of us on a non regularly scheduled yeah. meeting night. But um, yeah, given the, um, the subject of my application, which is a, a, a text, a text amendment request to um, Section 1215, the strategic development zone, and uh, further clarification on the regulatory requirements for warehouse uh, buildings in town. Um, there's a significant uh, likelihood that there's going to be overlap of discussion with the PC22. That, that's the concern. Yep. Um, so, in a desire to not cause any conflict <laughs> for both you or myself, um, but also to allow you know, my application for a hearing. Yes. Uh, I would like to request that we continue, or not continue, sorry, postpone the start of uh, the public 
procuring until you're regularly scheduled to meeting on October 4th. Um, I believe it is the 20th of town. Let's continue to the 20th. 20th. Yes, yeah, next week. Um, so if you are, it sounds like you're willing to consider that request. Um, so I hope you consider that request. But um, with that continuation, I'd also like to request that that post that continuation with that postponement. I'd like to request that um, you know PZ twenty two thirteen should it be postponed? Um, be clearly noted on any future agendas, including the one on the twentieth, just so that there's no confusion. Uh, by the public as one this will be heard. Sometimes we need to drop off the agendas as they come out if they're continued for a long time. Um, but also in light of that, and this is a separate follow-up request independent of the um, postponement, um, I'd like to request that the commission consider a moratorium on the subjects of my application until it can be clearly heard. That would be a moratorium on the use of 1215. Um, and also um, a moratorium on any warehouse applications or construction. Um, until such time as the application can be fairly heard, it can be fairly judged. And any follow up or supplemental evaluation you guys may choose to do on your own as a result of that, because it's a hot subject in town um, that is fairly complex, um, that you guys can pursue it on your own um, you know, and evaluate it yourself. Um, I have no control over the timing of how long my hearings I take or how long your um, you know, decision on PC 2010 and D. Um, but it could drag out. We don't know if there's going to be continued public hearings. You guys have a certain statutory requirement to rule on it. You may ask for follow up. Um, it could be pretty lengthy. So I would just request that as an opportunity to be fairly heard and not have the merits of my application be <coughs> without you know, a new cause. So. Uh, I have a letter stating such, which I will only get to you. Okay. Requesting that postponement. Um, All right, so we're requesting a postponement, not a continuation. So uh, the application was officially received by the commission on the 19th of July. So 65 days from that is the 22nd of September. So you can either extend, the, get an extension of time to postpone opening the public hearing um, in discussion with the applicant to a date agreed upon um, so that he can grant the number of days required, or you can open the hearing, take no testimony, which closes the first 65 days and starts the next set of time frames. You've got 35 days to close the hearing once it's open, but because you haven't used extension days, you can allocate any number of the 65 days to that. But you've got to figure out how you want to do that tonight because I'm not going to discuss it on the 20. So we can open this and immediately postpone it to the 4th of October. Correct. You could you could just postpone it to the 4th of October. If you don't have a decision on the other application, postpone it again. And if you get to the 35 days, you'd need to request an, an extension. But otherwise, he has to provide an extension. I mean, is there any? It sounds like the statutory duration is the same either way from the total. You have 65 days to distribute however you are comfortable. You can distribute it on the, the time frame to open the hearing, on the time frame to close once it's open, or the time frame to issue to select. Postponing the start gives a couple of extra, uh, an extra 11 days from 60 because we're not out of that 35. Well, so you... that would be my preference personally, but um, just in case. Well, I, since we have a sort of a recognized conflict here, the fact that we're actively pursuing an application under the very regulations that's attempted to be text amended, rather than get caught up in time frames, because I know that that 65, 35 days is a little bit hard to digest for mm -hmm. me. Is there any advantage to just withdrawing the application and reapplying? Was there a fee involved? Uh, yes. It was waived the fee. Yeah. I mean, could we, could we do something to help this out? Because clearly, this is more of a regulatory, sort of an administrative issue rather than a true. I mean, this, you know, the, the timing is what we're talking about, not right. the merits of the application. It's really just the timing of when it was presented. Is there any way we could waive the fee and just simply start fresh with a new meter running? At a more appropriate time. I mean, I'm, yeah, I think the application fee is something that we could deal with, but I think you probably want to be in a position where you either know now or get to a point where you've used your extension days and make that decision. But you're at, 
Are we sort time. of limiting ourselves as to how much time we then have to deliberate? If we, I'm happy to make that decision then. We can, we can extend it at that point. Yeah, we can. I see. So we can use up all our time. And then the applicant can extend again and refresh the meter. Right. Because okay. that's we, fine. What, what we don't, I just want, don't want to end up hurting the applicant or ourselves. Right. We, so we have to notice any text amendment application to CROG with a 30 day lead time. Okay. So if he withdraws yeah. and resubmits tomorrow, the, the soonest we could get anything would be the end, end of October. Okay. And um, that's the other consideration. Obviously. Yeah. So that's fine. Uh, that's, I just wanted to administratively. I'm sorry. We don't want, we don't want. To add a procedural error to any no, decision, yes, which exactly. would then create a whole that's yeah. What I was trying to avoid. So since we don't do this very often, <laughs> we're gonna hope we're gonna open this hearing. I think uh, his preference is to just postpone. Okay. All right. So he's gonna. So he. I'm in, giving you a letter saying I you know grant any regular uh, statutory okay. extension of time to the start of the meeting. Um, so the before how many days that makes it. Yeah, when you count it up, someone check on that. Yeah, yeah. If that's not resolved, can at that point. Um, but I don't have to do it. So it's a twelve, 12 day. day. Yeah. No, I understand. It's, 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 it's so by my yeah. math, it's a twelve day extension, which gets us to the fourth. Yeah. No. So if on the fourth, things have not settled, the commission can discuss. <laughs> right. But so that's what we're using. Yeah. Twelve days okay. and yeah, sixty. Yeah, that's fine. That's just I wanted to go for you. Well, I'm, I'm glad we're all on the same page with this one because yeah, I, I was just, I was thinking heavy on this one. No, today, that's about, like, just a question thing. though. Um, yep, go ahead. So not interfering with the decision on the current application, can we suspend um, section 12.15 for any future applications? Because the only way to suspend it would be to eliminate il create a text amendment basically eliminating it. Make right. a motion to you can't make a motion, you'd have to treat it as a text amendment. So 30 day crowd yeah, referral, go public motion. hearing, legal notice. Even to do a moratorium, there are statutory requirements. There has to be a purpose, it has to be for a specific amount of time. Just like with cannabis, we had a moratorium to consider the adoption of regs. Correct. Can but, you consider a moratorium on but we would have to run it as a text amendment. A moratorium is the same thing. It has to be referred 30 days. So we're we don't buy ourselves any time. Your clock will run out on this application before you run out on any of any of the other regulatory requirements they would have to go to Prague for review so you could do any of those things but you're going to be 30 to 45 days behind today because of what we have to do statutorily if that makes sense so request it in all honesty you know given the fact that my application might very well be heard yeah at that time or extended past that time Right, I believe you mentioned something specific to warehouses, but 1215 doesn't. Correct, it doesn't, right, it doesn't in the application letter to ask for clarification. In my uh, private yeah, narrative, yeah. it would ask for clarification. Uh, the, the commission could provide clarification on the definition of warehouse accessibility okay. regulatory requirement. That's that, but that kind of gets into this book here, and that's kind of a different story. That 1215 isn't specific to warehouses in any way that I can see. So. Right, no, so it is not specific. So, to use. so, talking about warehouses is kind of a regular zoning issue rather than a 1215 issue. Am I right? 1215 is, is, is a specific piece of the regs. Right. So, you could put into 1215 right. that, but we, we want to talk about the definition of warehouse. Now we're getting into this, which is another story. Correct, because in, totally there are other zones which yeah, would allow right. that. That's use. a different avenue. I think that given we have so many things in the air related to this use, we really right. need to take it one by one. I, I totally I, I agree. To totally. not, so so 12 day extension on this application gets us to the, the meeting on 10 4, where the commission will have to make a decision yeah. at that point as far as extend, mm -hmm. consider. Well, we're going to see where we're at with 10. Right. 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 So the next, end. so we'll it'll yep. be on that agenda, and you can have a discussion right. with the applicant on how to okay. proceed on the floor. Very good. I don't know if you made a motion yet or not, but we're all on the same page. So we're somebody. <laughs> okay, so let me. You're gonna take a shot. <laughs> I'm, I'm go gonna take it. a shot at this. You got it. All right, so go I it. move. Yeah. It's an, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a put a twelve day extension. Is it on the club public hearing? For this to, before we open the postponement of PZ 2213. Did I get that kind of close? October 4th. Uh, to the October 4th meeting. Correct. Yep. I'll do it. I'll second. Nice job. <laughs> All in 
favor. Aye. 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 Nice, nice motion. Aye. Next time I'll write it out first before I try. Uh, that, that, one, that, one, that one got a little confusing. Sure, that was a complicated right. issue. No, it is. All right. Um, and just as a just as a follow up, just to be clear that that'll show up, that extension will show up on meeting agendas on the 20th, the 4th, whatever it may be, you know, the next meeting agenda that will most up. So people aren't confused online. <laughs> I don't know I can do anything about any online confusion, but we'll put no, it on the agenda. agenda. Yes, on the yes. It, it will, we will find some way to indicate that it that there will be no action and it has been continued. Would or, that go under unfinished business? It'll stay under or where it is because we haven't done anything with it. So it's under public. So we'll agenda. just issue a note under continued public hearings, no discussion, continued to, or something like that. Sure. So it'll hang where, where done that. it lives okay. now. And, We'll move forward. I don't like the agendas are getting tight, so it's obvious, right? They are getting tight. You might have to get a few pages. I know. <laughs> you Thank paid. you, everybody. I appreciate it. All right. All right. One, one thing I did realize that on these uh, hybrid hearings, we I think maybe somebody can remind me or if we also have people. I didn't online. see any hands go up. Okay. No, there were no hands. I Nothing just want to make sure that we don't overlook anyone else. Good, Walter. No, that's, yeah, that's great. Intensive. All right. Uh, yes, yes. All right. Uh, item D, PZ-22-14, text amendment application pertaining to the prohibition of cannabis establishments, section 13, applicant ruling for the planning and zoning commission. Uh, so just, I guess, a little background. Way back um, when we were sort of contemplating the various statutory requirements of cannabis now, um, we put together for you to review um, zoning regulations to allow for them. And during the discussion, discussed basically um, running a prohibition to see sort of what the feedback was. So we scheduled it and then there was obviously 2210 showed up and so we sort of hit pause on it, which is why it's happening so much later. Obviously you're all aware that you adopted the regulations which are in effect and we have an application which was received. That person uh, participated during one of those hearings and, and stated that that was the intent. So um, the, the language that was submitted, which you have a copy of essentially just makes all cannabis establishments prohibited. Um, which is the flip side of the coin to the regulations that were established. Um, it would not have any implication on the application that was submitted because they're obviously not retroactive um, and would simply replace that if the commission decided to um, move forward with that. So this would in effect limit any further. Right, if fast forward six months, if the application that's currently in, in pending is approved and you subsequently adopt the prohibition, it makes that application or that operation non-conforming and would prohibit any further establishments of, of any kind on both retail and cultivation. Can you state that again, Mike? I'm still back on the last one. Okay. Which part? <laughs> you don't want to hear me talk to all that. So, um, so there's an application. I'm just trying to put everything. So there's an application. Mm -hmm that meets the current regulations. That was submitted, right, with, under the regulations to allow cannabis that was approved, what, six four months? meetings ago, something like so, that. Yeah. 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 So the commission, we, the majority of the commission voted yeah. in favor of those sure. regulations. So if we vote, if we hear and everything and we say, we put the moratorium, no, we prohibit the use. Is that application stop or the if no. the application's no. building goes in? It, no, they can open. They they can go through the process. It'll be non-conforming though in the future, so that they won't be able. To, another one won't be able to open there in the okay. future. Okay, that's what I didn't. That's or, right. I, right. I missed. Or any further ones in, other than that. One. Just to remind everybody, this is only the public hearing. There's no decision being made. It's just like, this is a public hearing about a new application to permit cannabis. So. Yeah. Since the deliberation and discussion hasn't happened yet on that, but just uh, just so I'm clear, um, there were no regulations of cannabis, and then regulations were established. I mean, basically, it was just as it would have been treated as any special permit retail. Cannabis would have been the same as a jewelry store, as a 
Well, I a, bet it was illegal, uh, prior. A like, little bit. It was all right. The state yeah. said, if you don't, if you do not take a position on cannabis, you shall treat them as a similar use. Which, Correct. That's right. Which a lot of people say is liquor store, but but they're sort of leaning now in the direction of uh, pharmacy. Yeah. For, okay. On the retail side. So um, the commission did some work. Staff did work. Came up with regulations. Uh, I remember there was amended amendments of distance to establishments. And those amendments were drafted. Subsequent to that, uh, that vote that those were allowed, we then got an application. Mm -hmm. So that application now doesn't go under the prior regulations where it was sort of a little more wide. It came under the narrower regulations that were established. Correct. And then based on, and this is just me remembering, based on there was quite a bit of public outcry, which didn't seem that it had happened before. Didn't seem that there was a whole lot of public involvement, and I'm not faulting anyone. But I know notices were posted, public hearings were held, both meetings were all open, and the public elected to not participate in those meetings. But because of the some uh, because of the timing, cannabis came to the forefront, and people spoke out about it and didn't hear a few a few positive comments, majority negative. And uh, then it was we talked about okay, so we do have the ability to completely eliminate them, but only we have to wait for the appropriate time. And it does look kind of silly that we first passed it and then we might take it away. Fine, we're learning as we go. So well, <laughs> if you remember when you, it was during our first meeting at the school, right. Ken Slater sat here and basically because we knew that there was an application that was being prepared by a, by a you know, future operator, if you right. will, it, to not adopt anything would mean that we had no standards. We had no standard, right. We wanted to. Put in, and right. I, I like to think that we did the right thing. Like, and in, and in the interest of protecting the town and for whatever you want to call it, or I don't know, protecting maybe the wrong word. I don't really anything against wrong. cannabis in particular, but um, just in order to sort of create some sort of regulation and control and management over land use from a from a procedural or, or legal. I don't yeah. know how, what you want to call it, but the yeah. other thing that we had got clarification from Ken on is. Running regulations to to regulate cannabis, which is the thing you considered, had you denied that application, that does not mean they're prohibited. Correct. Right. So Correct. what we came to understand from Ken was that you can deny the text amendment to allow them, and that basically means you have no standards, right. which is the more wide open option. So right. 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 to sort of protect, we adopted, and then, so we started this in July, July twenty first. So it's been going on, you know, 30 day referral to crowd, et cetera. And then the agenda has been pretty slammed up, which is why there's been such a gap. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to frame it all up in my head. I don't know if I made it clearer or more confusing, but uh, it's, real. it's a confusing subject. All right. Any, any questions um, for the commission? That, 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 this that, that, simply that, 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 that we want to see, you know, this is to prohibit future ones. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I have a lot of questions. Uh, Ed Tame and Lisa Lane. Um, why would we be prohibiting them? I don't understand this. Um, I, um, you know, some of you may know I'm an attorney. I represent um, a group of um, entrepreneurs, not in Willington. They have no intentions to come to Willington. But um, I've had a firsthand look at um, their operations, they have uh, a grow operation up in, in Beckett, Mass. They have a dispensary that's gonna be opening up there as well. And they have a legal um, hemp operation in Eastford. Hemp is just marijuana without THC in it. Uh, and there's no psychoactive element to it. Um, these businesses produce a tremendous amount of foot traffic for any, any um, you know, any air, wherever they go. And, um, and that's what you want in town. And um, the average dispensary uh, or grow operation can produce anywhere. A dispensary typically will produce about $10 million in sales per year. And a, a grow operation can produce up to 20 million or more than $20 million in sales. Um, but the a dispensary will drive tremendous amount of traffic to, to the restaurants in town, to uh, re local retail, um, I know, and we all joke about it, but you know, we can joke about it, but it's really, I mean, there's, you know, and, and I wanna see flat pennies get their liquor license, I really do. 
And I went to the restaurant already. It was, I loved it. But on one hand, it's okay. Let's just, yeah, sure. Let's give liquor. But God forbid there's cannabis. It's marijuana. And I don't want to, and I don't want to, please, I'm not, I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm you know, saying anything negative against them. Because I think it's a wonderful idea for, that, for them to have it. But getting back to this, uh, marijuana, I don't know why there's this disparity in treatment between liquor and, and marijuana. I mean, I don't know what you're afraid. It's been studied. It's been studied ad nauseum. And now it's legal that after the result of all these studies, it's sweeping the country. It is legal. And this is the thing you, you need. To, I want to just, the, the point I want to make, one of the points I want to make. When these, when, the, when a group of entrepreneurs get a license from the state to have a, let's say, a dispensary, they make a decision as to where they're going to go. And if we're one of those towns that's just sort of thinking about it, because we're going to put on either a moratorium or a prohibition, whether it's permanent or temporary, they're going to look at that town and see that that's in place, and they're going to move on. And then they're going to put go somewhere else. They'll go, you know, and we're an ideal location right off 84. We have Phelps Plaza. You know, we can, or some, you know, there's businesses, there are areas, there's places where this, this can go. I know Phelps Plaza is mostly full, but it's not really, not completely. And um, there are, um, it is a tremendous opportunity. There is a host agreement that the towns enter into with, with these dispensaries and the grow operations where you get 3% of, typically it's 3% of the income. Well, 3% of 10 million is $300,000 if, if I have my math right, yeah. $300,000. So in addition to all the people coming, they just come in, they buy it. They're not consuming it there. They're not allowed to consume it. They come in, they buy it, and they go. And, they, they'll, and they'll, 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 they'll go to local establishments to eat, to eat lunch, breakfast, lunch, whatever, dinner. They'll go, you know, and they'll, they'll stop for whatever else they need in town. And so this is a tremendous opportunity for this town to make some money. But if we put any kind of prohibition, whether it's permanent or a temporary moratorium, you're going to lose that opportunity. They're just going to go somewhere else. They'll, go, they'll just go down the street to Thailand. They'll go to one right off 195. And they won't buy, then they'll get all the money. And don't think you're going to save the world from smoking pot, the evils of pot, because that's just a silly notion. All right. Whoever's smoking pot now is going to, is already, they're already doing it. So we're not going to, we're not going to, you know, I don't, you know, so. I don't, I would urge you not to make it to, to make it illegal or to prohibit the, um, we, we can't make it illegal. All we can do is prohibit it. But I would urge you not to. I mean, I, I this is, you know, you know, whether you drink or don't drink, whether you smoke or don't smoke, whatever it is, it is. But, you know, I mean, I don't go to a beauty salon, I don't go to a beauty salon, but I have no problem with people having a beauty salon. Okay. So if whatever, teach their own. Teach their own. I think it's a big mistake, and I think, and I, I would urge you to um, to not prohibit, to allow the uh, a grow operation. You know, we're trying to get business in the town, the kind of business that we want. We don't want you. You know what the town's people, how they feel about the uh, you know the, all these past hearings that we've had. All right, on the on the logistics center. Okay, you know how the town people feel about that. This is the kind of business that we want. This is it. And so I would just urge you to reconsider. Okay, thank you all. And I don't know if you have any questions, but I, I don't know why, and I just, my only question to you is why are you doing this? I think the support's been split. Okay. It, it's been split. We've heard yeah. from both yeah. sides. It's still federally illegal to, which- Well, that's gonna change. It hasn't yet. But it's legal, yeah. it's legal. We, we also have to take into account what our other residents say that aren't in favor. I understand. So, I understand. Yeah. That's why I'm here, just yeah. giving my side okay. of the, my point of view. Okay. All right. Thank you all. I appreciate yeah. it very much. Thank you, Ed. Yeah. So I just want to mention we did get, uh, I got an email from Tessa, uh, okay. and she's she's here. So okay. uh, you have a, a hard copy right. of it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It doesn't matter if we yeah. get an extra copy, sir. Do you want me to send this to anybody? She's here, but she emailed it, so we printed it out. Yeah, so I, here. you guys already have the yeah, I got it right before. You want to see if she wants to? Yeah, go ahead. Her hands up. Tessa, Tessa should, go ahead. You should be able to unmute.
Yep. Okay. Yes. Hi, I'm Tess Katowski. I live at 184 Wellington Hill Road in Wellington. And um, I saw the agenda this evening and I just wanted to weigh in on this issue. So um, first I wanna thank you for holding the public hearing for the purpose of seeking the public inputs and testimony concerning the application for a text amendment pertaining to the prohibition of cannabis establishments. So today I reviewed the documents that are subject of this hearing. And the memorandum that was prepared by the land use office back in July 7th um, was the summary statement indicated that the commission wanted to hear um, from the public what the support was or lack of support for these types of establishments. So I'm, I'm going to ask you to put me in the comments. I do not support this type of establishment in our town. And I believe that we should ban and or prohibit all cannabis establishments. And I have a few reasons why um, for this position. And the first one, there is a conflict between federal and state law with regard to the legality of cannabis use. The second one is there's a concern of unintended consequences for crime, increased traffic and more driving under the influence on our streets, potential harm to adolescents and those prone to addictive behaviors. The third one is the nexus to our small town, our population is very small, to the, the larger population of Mansfield and Yukon. And lastly, our town does not have a police force. So those are some of the concerns that I have. And doing a little bit of research um, on, on the internet today, early this year, 40% of Connecticut state um, municipalities have prohibited these types of establishments in their towns. So there is, I mean, some towns are, are saying, yeah, let's have it. Other towns are saying no to it. So I really think that um, we should really think very hard on this, whether we want this type of activity in our town. But for me, my position is I don't think we should have it in our town. Thank you, Tessa. Nick Tella, go ahead. Nick Tella, 49 Myrtle. Uh, so it is illegal federally to have uh, the cannabis. <clears throat> I also wanted to touch upon how um, there's been a study showing that 6.6% .6 increase in uh, injuries in car crashes and an also 4% increase in fatal crashes when they did a study of uh, five Western states, uh, Colorado, Nevada, Oregon, Washington, and California, comparing it to other Western state so they have seen an increase of people getting hurt and also dying uh, that are using recreational uh, marijuana so again it is illegal federally thank you nick anyone else yes sir yes todd this and i don't know 41 cosgrove road i had the privilege to speak with salvatore the selectman from of Stafford Springs, who currently owns the old Wellington Hill package store. Uh, reason being, I used to own a recently sold a three family house in Stafford, and I met him and spoke with him. And he is very interested that Wellington denies this permit so his town can get it. And piggybacking off of the lawyer that spoke, is everything he said is exactly what Salvatore is speaking of brings in. And in the event that even though if Wellington prohibits it, it's going to be sold right at the street of Stafford. So I'm not for it and I'm not against it. But as far as what is allowed and what, what is not allowed is also pertinent to what needs the town to run on for businesses, taxes, and bringing certain things into like established like establishments like Flat Penny. Thank you. Thank you. Further comments? Yes, James. Uh, James Marshall, 46 Fisher Hill. Um, yeah, I just want to say I, I really don't have necessarily any strong objection to uh, cannabis establishment, but my concern is really strictly about the town's ability to enforce um, to just enforce law <laughs> around said establishment, whether that be somebody sitting and you know sparking up in the parking lot and driving away, um, or just general traffic and safety measures, because you know we don't have a police force, we don't have a trooper. Um, Speed in this town, just general vehicular incidents are tough to monitor. It may not even be, it's not really a cause for the zoning board, other than back into consideration. I don't any record, any remedies to that end are probably with the uh, Port of Selectmen or other agencies here, but um, 
Yeah, it's just a concern. I, I really, as long as we can monitor and, and you know maintain um, a safe environment, I see no problem with another with the campus. Thank you. Further comments? Further comments online? Nothing there. Just a question. There was, I think this one can address this question as far as the three percent revenue. It can be allocated to safety, potential safety concerns, yeah. is that right? That's correct. So, so there are uh, specific uses that the revenue can be used for. So it wouldn't just go into uh, a general fund for general um, purposes. Mm -hmm. And I apologize, I don't have that data in front of me. I don't know if Mike um, uh, has a, the, uh, kind of an overview of the items that the revenue could be utilized for. And some of them could go to address concerns that um, the public has spoken of. Education. Um, it is one of those. Uh, a lot of could it could be funneled it be, through could, our human services could department. It be paid for, could it be used for the resident trooper if we were to remember? I'm going to try to pull up the, uh, I have it in my <laughs> original yeah. report. It's just. Yeah. 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 familiar with that question as well. I asked, but I didn't have an answer. Yeah, that was the answer. question before. Yeah, okay, that was the question before. Yeah, that's why it sounded so familiar. I thought public safety was off the table, so we for something like that. Yeah, I think the human resource department. Is that what it was? Yeah, so Jen, Jenny's department would benefit. Right, right. Uh, something like from that. that. Uh, being able to use those. Right. And there's something in there about summer employment for youth. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm just, I had it in the, because uh, it's not in the prohibition language because the prohibition isn't going to have anything to do with that. pushes off to the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so that money is that could fill the gap on that. Easy to do that. Yeah. 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 Well, the more establishments that are created sort of dilutes each individual um, establishment from getting that 10 million dollars. Yeah. I mean, if you have one in oh, right. 50 miles, they're going to get 10 million, and you get one every four so, miles, so it, really, get 10 million anymore. Like, like it can go into uh, streets, improvements, and other neighborhood developments yep. in communities where cannabis retailers, hybrid retailers, or micro cultivators are located. Um, education programs or youth employment and training programs in the municipality, services for individuals living in the municipality who are released from uh, Department of Corrections, custody, probation, or par uh, parole, mental health or addictive services, uh, youth uh, service bureaus or municipal uh, juvenile review boards, and community civic engagement efforts. Not public safety direct, directly. We could have a junior police that's all to deal with the effect of police out there. What was the last one? Uh, community <laughs> civic engagement efforts. I mean, I know a lot of towns have like a community services officer, a community support sure. officer. Um, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think. We've done a number of different, there's been a number of trainings in the land use community from both the governor's office and some of the attorneys that were involved in drafting the law. And I, I don't think that they, in the greater detail I'm trying to find that. Um, but it doesn't seem like it explicitly states it. Though I don't know the town's budget well enough to know if there's if the town were to receive two hundred thousand dollars from cannabis retail, could they take the two hundred thousand dollars that they're currently paying for the general fund? And then take that money. Correct. Yeah. So you may be able to do that. I don't know what the, what the budget looks like, but Guess that would be a, another option. I, There's not two hundred thousand dollars swing there, so 
I know it's not really related to the prohibition. I, I mean, I, if you want to keep things open, I can certainly try to answer that question. Uh, I okay. think it's crucial. So I don't think we need to keep it open. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing on uh, uh, PCC 2214 text amendment application pertaining to the prohibition cannabis establishment. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, it's closed. All right, so that brings us to uh, item E, and this should not be uh, PZ-22-10, it should be PZ-22-15, and this will be uh, whether we make a decision or not tonight on the uh, liquor uh, special permit application for alcohol sales at 12 Collin Turnpike. Uh, I personally don't see any reason to extend this to we feel that we want to. All right, I'm going to make a motion to approve a uh, special permit for uh, PZ-22-15 application for alcohol sales, 12 Tallinn Turnpike, Flat Penny's Kitchen, applicant Laura Pineo, owner Willington Station, LLC. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Good luck with your business. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you All right, uh, there you go. PZ 22-11, uh, we know where that's heading. That's been, and you, to 10 four. Yep, to 10 four. We know the uh, story of PZ 22-14. Again, that was uh, to 10 four after uh, Rebecca's lovely motion. Was that 13? That was 13. I'm sorry, sorry about that. That's 13. I'm left. The blue box is throwing me out of whack here after <laughs> everything now. No, 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 no one it's not like the old No matter what I do, they're different. <laughs> different's bad. I'm going to send out, like, right. making like a wedding invitation now. You'll get a personal. All right. And uh, then we have PZ-22-14. I personally like to make a decision for future date on this after we yeah, let's, think about let's, this one. Let's think about it. And then we, we use the part 65 okay. days. Yeah. Is there anything that you need or want from me? Oh, this is okay. People's opinion on it. Okay. That's what it comes down to at this point. Yeah, you're going to get both sides of the coin. Do you want this shown on the agenda for next Tuesday or do you want to push this to the fourth? Push, well? push this one to the fourth, please. Can there be a note on the ones that have been extended, et yes. cetera, that just. Yeah. For that meeting specifically, not going to be discussed. It's for that yeah. fourth meeting. Well, we'll work somehow. Mm -hmm. Nice pre -pre boxes. You can have a two-page agenda. Yeah, I, I don't think we want to muddy like you know the twentieth with any of this. Yeah, I, I it makes it. Yeah, yeah. We don't. All right. So we're right. still the tree board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the same trees. What's that? Like the the yeah. <laughs> but the trees are done. So yeah. Can we reduce the font size? All right. <laughs> We're killing a lot. Of them. All right. Do it on the back. Okay, item E, 264, Ruby Road, informal discussion. Good evening, Commission. Commissioner, my name is Ben Sherry. This is Patrick Biodosio. We go for for Suncap Development Group. Um, just wanted to introduce ourselves so you know who we are. Um, we're proposing a text amendment, but we hired Joe Williams here as our land use attorney, and I'll let him dive more into the details. But before he did, I wanted to introduce ourselves. He's a Sun Sun Property Group. What what is Suncap Property? Uh, we're a real estate development company, uh, headquarters in Charlotte, North Carolina. Thank you. Any other questions before Joe and dives into the meats and potatoes? Um, let's hear what it is. We, uh, we would like to propose a text amendment to the uh, regulations for the DI designed industrial zone. Um, and that will be to allow a, well, we would, we would like to make the regulations allow, and then we would come in for a special permit to allow a service parking facility at the property listed 264 Ruby Road uh, to serve as overflow parking for a nearby warehouse and distribution facility that already exists in Wellington. 
Um, and the reason we want to propose a text amendment is there's two reasons. First, to clarify that the use would be allowed if the commission uh, is amenable to it. I say that because in the regulations, as you know, you have a long list of uses that are permitted in the BI zone. <clears throat> and one of them states garages for the parking of more than two commercial motor vehicles, such as garages. Um, you also have, just if you want to note it down, it's section 5.05, 0.01, 0.02, 0.24. Those garages. But then you also have the um, table of uses. Section 5.11, and that uses slightly different language. So there's a little bit of, uh, of inconsistency between the regulation and the table. In the table, it says automobile parking lots and garages, comma, commercial. So it says that in the DI zone, you can have a commercial parking lot or garage, whereas the regulation just says garage. Um, so that would be the first part of the text amendment that we would like to come in with is basically just to add in parking lot into the language and the regulation to allow a certain parking lot for overflow parking. Um, I want to be clear that the, the facility that we would be looking to support has absolutely nothing to do with the one that's pending before the commission on River Road. Um, so just so there's no confusion about that, we're, we're not looking to do anything that relates to that current application whatsoever. The second part of the request um, would have to do with lot coverage. And as you know, you have a table uh, five, excuse me, 8.02 that provides for lot coverage. And in some of your zones, you just have one number. That's a total amount of lot coverage you can have for building and for paving. Um, but then in some other zones, you have it split between building and pavement. And that's what you have in the design industrial zone, 25% for building, 25% for pavement. And our proposal would need to go up to about 35% pavement coverage. We're not gonna be proposing any building. Um, but my thought was, and, and this is why we want to have this conversation just to get your initial reaction to it, or if you have a different direction for us, we'd love to hear that too. Uh, I, my I, thought would be just to propose one number 50% for pavements. I have a question, yep. why is this to, is this for uh, employee? vehicles or these the queue up trucks is that what 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 is the purpose we, of this lot we would propose that it be able to accommodate trucks and employee vehicles and vans that type of thing and all together in this lot yes interesting for what for what purpose it, it would be overflow parking to serve a, a nearby facility for uh that does warehousing and distribution so we, we can guess who that is because it's only one but we won't mention it since you're not, but thank you. But the uh, do they not have enough parking for their employees now? Do they do they have enough too many trucks on the uh, you know coming in at once that they need to queue them up somewhere else? So, so yeah, so this is just for it's usually for the peak seasons is usually what it's used for, but it's just the same setup that they have at their facility, just three set separate sections, some for auto parking some for van or tr tractor parking and then some for trailer parking. <clears throat> so as a facility meets higher demands, they can use this facility to kind of utilize it for overflow parking if they have too much on the current. So this would have to be well lit or would it would be? How close is that to the bus garage? I'm trying to like judge down the road. The into that garage? Yes. It is okay, just, so it's just off road. Associates. What, what is this land? Um, I can tell you. Very nice, the bus parking. It, that's the big gravel. Oh, well, that's is this that recycling operation that yes, kind of figured yes. out? Uh, yeah, there's no active, there's no activity on the property okay. now. It hasn't been for years. Yeah, my yes. I proposed to recycling. Yes, that's what it was. But I remember when it was before us back mm -hmm. 10 years ago, whatever yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and to answer your question more directly, yes. It is, they are running out of room for parking for their current operations. And this so, this isn't a flat piece of property. This would involve quite right. a bit of modification to Correct. achieve that. Yes. And this project would go. If I remember right, it kind of goes uphill and the 
Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, they're proposing 35% coverage. I don't know how big the okay. parcel is, but I think yeah, you probably see most of what's at the back. So once it goes up there, there, it kind of levels up. There's mm -hmm. a wetland. There's a so, okay. So throw a number out there. How many vehicles on the, on the, on the lot by your estimation? Uh, I think the total parking spaces is 346. So I could go back and look and confirm. But that's broken out into different sections. Um, we have done some analysis on sound to just kind of see how it would impact the surrounding areas. Um, we are sensitive to light, so there is opportunity there, but we really want to tackle the text amendment for now to make sure we're going in the right direction. And then mm -hmm. obviously, once we go through the submittal process, we reach any concerns technically on the property. Uh, I, I'd be concerned about that curve. Uh, in all honesty, we've taken out, I'm on the fire department, the curve just below there between regular town traffic and people out of town who aren't used to that road have taken out the same telephone pole four times in a year. Mm. So it is, I, I worry about traffic coming out of there the wrong direction. Now, I know as Ben said, all of that, if, if, if you gave the text amendment, which we haven't applied for yet, but so we're just chatting tonight about the potential for it. Then we would apply for it. There'd be a public hearing. If you gave the text amendment, then we would apply for a special permit. And then the commission would have another public hearing and you would get into all of that. And we would have to give you the information, have the professionals look at it. Uh, of course, most of the vehicles that will be parking in this lot are professional drivers. Keep that. They're not perfect. Uh, they drive by my house every day. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to also note, since based upon what they said for the number of parking, they would meet the DOT's major traffic or trip generator criteria, so they would need OSTA approval, um, regardless of, the, I mean, they're on a state road, but because they're going to trip that 200 space category, if that's what they show up with, they're going to have to go to the state to look at sight lines and all that. Yeah, that's right. something that's right. to involve that road. Ralph, you want to say something so bad? It's I do. I do. I can't help it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, this is an informal discussion, so yes. I hope that uh, my input uh, is welcome or not, but I'm going to go with it anyway. I'm a professional engineer. I've lived in that area since birth. I know that road. Are we looking at tandems going from 84 to this facility? that might create a problem because I believe they're limited to one mile from the interstate, the Tampa Trail. That would be a concern. The other concern is Ruby Road from the emergency entrance to TA South is kind of windy. Uh, there's two culverts there. There are some guardrail posts next to one of those culverts that's been knocked over repeatedly because people just don't judge that well uh, the vehicles. so uh if something like this were to move forward i can certainly see some infrastructure improvements to that way aside from the site lines that people are heading stuff in now uh, or traffic heading north uh, and, uh, and we're happy to have that conversation mr chairman we uh, we don't my gentleman's input and welcome everyone's input. I would just say that that's probably getting one step ahead of ourselves because, like I said, if if and only if the text amendment were approved after we applied for it, then we'd be coming back in for a special permit. That's, I think, the right time for the commission to examine the traffic of a particular facility. Because right now we're just looking for if you had any input on the idea of changing the coverage from 25 and 25 to just 50 as one number. And to clarify that the use of a parking lot for commercial vehicles is allowed in the eyes. Considering the entity that is not to be named, <laughs> I wonder if it wouldn't be a better uh, suggestion for them to think about expanding on site. Can I jump in? You betcha. So uh, the entity that shall not be named came in and had it sat down with us in the land use office a really long time ago. And we talked about I'm aware of there we're too big for our britches. We've got stuff off site. We need to figure something out. There is a conservation easement which essentially wraps the building, which prevents any additional expansion towards the large 400 acre piece behind that. They they can't develop it. 
it would involve the town and the state coming together to do something with it. So that was our first, my first impression is stick on site. We've got it there. Yeah. Um, so they, the, the, the way that that property was developed prevents that from being the case. Well, and I don't know how far I want to go out on this limb. I think the proposal to compensate for the use of that rest of the property, as it was presented to me, would be favorable. That's, that's all I want to say. Now, in terms of, a, <coughs> I'm still trying to like, this is a way, a little ways away from where I'm imagining. As employees, now what would they run a shuttle bus from this lot back to their uh, facility? That's that's a bit of a walk in inclement weather. So that's what the auto parking is for: is for individuals to park their car there. That's a security fence proposed or would be proposed around the company's equipment that is utilized with a turnstile. Yeah. So employees can park, walk through the turnstile, get whatever they need. And vice versa, if there is a gate, there will be a proposed gate at the entrance for their equipment and an auto vehicle. A lot of times will pull up, scan their cards, whatever security system they have, go in, pull in, and then park their personal car in a spot and then take a uh, So, so who, who would own this lot? That's the company? No. You, you guys are doing it for profit. For so you lease it for profit. That's the purpose of the lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, James. So I did not the place is for sure. So consent, you just raised the question. I think that this is a used facility. So conceptually, you're building on spec again, and it doesn't necessarily be a property owner that shall not be named. It could be any future development that has a need for additional truck space could be leased to as well. So it could be an expansion offsite of any future development conceptually because it's not owned by the same. Property that nobody else owns. Any different here? A, B, A, or you know, other developers in question. Run out of space for their sole their mandatory rest period off the highway. Well, one one thing I want to add. Um, and been through the loves uh, endurance run. Oh, and Andy, I know you have. Mm -hmm. This is the incrementalism that got the ball rolling for loves. And I, and I don't need to adversely uh, reflect on these guys because they're doing what they do. Um, but loves evolves from, we'll just change this text a little bit. And then another application came in from Len Jacobs. And we want to change this section a little bit. And the next thing you know, you've got a full-blown major uh, proposal in front of you that had they started there, some of it might not have been, uh, been built. Uh, I'm not saying this is good or bad. All I'm suggesting is that the commission needs to really look into the future when you start modifying a little bit of text here and a little bit of text there. I'm not sure Love's would have continued if they knew all the challenges were ahead of them. I'm sorry? I said, I'm not sure Loves would have continued if they knew all the challenges ahead of them. They had one advantage. They're a private company. They had the pockets for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, someone who was working with a financial institution would have given up. All right. Well, so I, I, think, I, I think this... I'm not going to say I'm for or against this. I think it's, we need to understand this a lot more and mm -hmm. look at our regulations and Definitely. have some deliberations and so yeah. forth. I'm, uh, I'm not ready to say what I think about this time. So, uh, if I may, yeah. I, I don't think we're actually yeah. looking for a vote or a decision. Yeah. Yeah. We're not more going, obviously, we're, we're not going not, not at all. We're, this is a we're looking formal for discussion, your... but you're looking to, to see like, you know, whether you should put in an application for a tax amendment. And I, I, I personally, I'm not ready to give even that guidance. Wow. Is anyone else around this table? No, I, 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 I don't want to wrap my head around, around it with the. We're pretty, we're pretty silent on public parking. 
it, this is uh, so a like different one. Two vehicles. Yeah. So this is this is the first one of these I've it. ever heard of. And you know, like I'm saying, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It's just different. Mm -hmm. So we're you know we're taking a major company, building a least a, a lot, probably a relatively sophisticated lot with security devices and lighting and so forth, and and, and leasing it to them for for a profit. Okay, uh, I, I just think we need to have some discussions about this. I think our middle, our middle school parking lot was uh, increased and we didn't allow that to be paid. No. Well, the library was the same way. Yeah, but right. we wanted it in per, uh, per, per, per yeah, we we wanted wanted a purpose. It well, seems, I think one of the things they're looking for, right, they're not looking for you to say, yeah, submit your application or no, don't. But I think one of the things they're looking for is guidance on their approach. We, one of the things that I'm hearing from both sides of the table is that there's a concern related to um, the long-term use of the property. Obviously we regulate use, we don't regulate tenant, we don't regulate owner. So if we approve it for one person, it, it, it can be used by anybody. So the, the development of the site has to stand on its own. However, there are different ways in which we could explore how we arrive at that type of, um, application and I, I we haven't had any discussions about this i'm thinking out loud but you know it it seems like there's a concern about this being some finding a way to per, perhaps tie this to the entity that shall not be named um and i'm not sure there's a way to do that but is that something you think they should explore as a potential approach to the way they that's a good place to start okay the, the other place to start is some sort of and i was just spending a lot of money on plans at this point or anything but just some sort of visual so that we can kind of look at it and say this is this Absolutely. is yeah. but there are yeah. potential options for looking at this as an allowable accessory yeah. use to an existing operation with certain criteria so it would essentially be an offsite expansion of an existing operation which would limit and provide greater control because <clears throat> just like a, a detached garage is accessory to the house this could be somehow accessory sure. to, but it also brings up a lot of concerns about traffic and yeah. so forth on a narrow, twisting, winding mm -hmm. road that all it ever to come out of the dump or anything. I've had near misses as people come flying over the humps there where you can't see them. They hit the and we hope to be able to address all this yeah. concerns through the uh, approval processes. And, and Mike's point is is a good one. That is one of the ideas I thought about because yeah, you regulate use user but you can tie the use to another use and that's that's the kind of feedback we're looking for because we're happy to make the application that says it could potentially say you can increase the pavement number to 35 percent for a surface parking lot that is however you want to say it tied to connected to used by a nearby whatever you, so you, you can do that so that you know it doesn't it doesn't get that sold to somebody else who's doing something different somewhere else all right so yeah. since this is an informal discussion that yeah, i don't want to turn this into like some kind of like public hearing light we, we did allow some people here to talk i'm going to let patrick lord there see what he says. he's got his hand up and uh, yes, good uh, evening. thank you um uh, for the record uh, i'm speaking as a citizen uh, member of a commission or um, anyone else on that uh, board commission. Um, it may be behoove the board to seek um, uh, counsel on this because it seems like it's setting a precedent and potentially a future precedent where large corporations um, have their hand in our regulations and changing those uh, for their benefit. Um, and not so much that of the town and its citizens. So it may behoove the, um, the, the commission to seek counsel. Thank you. All right, thanks, Patrick. All right, so a lot of homework needs to be done on this one. Food for thought. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, item F, unfinished business day, affordable housing plan update. 
So I, I just wanted to put this back on the agenda because it's been hanging and obviously the commission has been busy. So, um, and I just didn't want people to wonder where it was. It looks like we're in the home stretch of sort of what may be the busy season. So if we want to look to pick this up in earnest, in October, based upon what the agenda looks like, if that works. Yeah, just don't say October 4th. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, so, you know, we, um, we've we already uh, informed the state that basically the schedule has been based upon us starting the, the process following COVID. Um, so that we're, we're good there. We're not gonna run into any issues. There's no, it's not like cannabis where if we don't have it, we're somehow, uh, going to be subject to something that we're not. The 8-30G appeals process is already in place. So that I just wanted to sort of put that on your radar. So I'll look at the agendas based upon where things stand and I'll, I'll drop it on whichever one following October 4th is light. If that works. Okay. Yeah. I read an article about this recently. It was um, <coughs> talking about how the, the town governments are having a hard time dealing with this and a problem in Connecticut or an improvement in Connecticut could be made if, if there was some sort of county government uh, that would handle this. Because, as I said before, it significantly impacts towns that don't have public sewer and public water. Uh, I, don't really, I don't think it's. I don't think that's been thought out at the state level. It's sort of an unfunded mandate. Uh, but if it was handled more of a macro level, somewhere between town and state. It would, it's actually a bit of a double-edged sword in that the towns that want it but don't have the infrastructure can't get it because the, the money doesn't make sense mm -hmm. and then there are a lot of towns not far from here that sort of say we don't have the infrastructure there's no pressure i mean if you go down towards stanford so much of what they're dealing with are these 8-30g appeals because they don't have the 10 percent, but they've got the infrastructure so these guys just get hammered with these affordable housing applications because they've got the market, they've got the infrastructure and they can get it done. And so they're just, it's this constant pressure that we don't feel here because we can't support the density that's required given the construction costs, which are insane right now. Yeah. So we'll probably be subject to the 8-30G appeals process forever. I, I don't, we would have to add, you know, every time we added 10 new houses, we'd have to add, you know, 11 or 12, more double than that of an affordable housing unit. And we're issuing, you know, uh, tens, dozens of, of new home permits per year in certain years, adding zero to this. So we're just getting further away. Um, it's, it's not likely something that's going to sort of change the trajectory of Wellington. But, you know, obviously we've got it right over here. So it can be done, but in very low density. It is a, well, you're referring to the senior. Yeah, you know, so. those qualify. And we have others yeah. that do as well. But it, the density is just such a challenge that the... the you guys probably remember what three years ago now you approved a zone change on River Road right at the Mansfield line. Um, on that the guy was going to develop apartment buildings for graduate right. students in but, there. But he, you know, he's got his wetlands flagged and to get septics in there, he, he just can't get the density. He, he tried all different types of construction styles. And so, you know, I mean, he's still sort of at it, but he just, it, the money does not make sense. Well, so, a lot of the good lands have already been. Used up here, and then other stuff still farmland and stuff like. Yeah, that, I know we haven't looked at stuff. it at it yet. You know, uh, spoiler alert on the affordable housing plan. One of the things we did talk about was looking at soil space zoning and identifying that. And so we did the analysis and we started pulling the GIS layers together and and looking at it and overlaid it over the parcels. And what's interesting is that some of the hot spots for the most um, the best soils are some of the more traditional neighborhood areas that we already have. They fall right on top of it, and that may be luck, it may not be, but it's kind of interesting that you've got that density in the place that the soils map says it's most well suited. Um, but we'll get into that in a couple of weeks. All right. All right. Uh, approval of minutes. I see you added the uh, present to speak uh, and the additional people on there. Yes. All right. The others. I think that's yeah, on I, uh, others I present. Right, they were here. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I got it. We, we they're done obviously you're looking at them you don't have to yeah if, if you're not but we did add that to the to the top you can move it to the next week if you uh, get a chance
relatively wordy, obviously. I commend Chris for getting the spelling right and all the speakers. Right. <laughs> I'm trying my best. I think like being a linguist. Yeah, right. We want to hold these till next meeting or for. Oh, it's open until next meeting. Thank you. Some of this stuff I can't forget. <laughs> the recording's online too. Yeah. Yeah, I watched part of it over. I have nothing better to do. But... <laughs> do we need a motion to do minutes to be tabled till the next meeting? Mm -hmm. You can if you, you can if you'd like to. It's Not really, but so. it, I didn't oh, know. Oh, go for it. Good practice. Yeah. Well, no, because then you have to vote to pull them from the table, and we're not going to do right. that. We'll, we filed them. We have to be filed yeah. in seven days, okay. so we'll check that box. We'll put them on the agenda for Excellent. next meeting. All right. Item H, public participation. Yes, Ralph. You had your hand up first. Yours went up first. Two things. Two things. Yeah. Um, on meeting agendas, I remember Mark France handling on me as chairman to make sure that the address is identified, the location of the meeting, the building, and exactly where in the building the meeting will be. And to say, particularly for an older Wellington resident, that the meeting will be held at the Wellington Town Hall is can be misunderstood because for many of us, the town hall is on the green. This is the town office. Um, just a suggestion. But the other thing I stumbled across the other day is FOIA requires agendas to be available 48 hours prior to a hybrid meeting. Something you might want to look into because the revised agenda came out yesterday. And if FOIA is actually requiring that for a hybrid, and, and I think the reason is for people to get organized to attend the hybrid meeting. Um, I can't recall exactly where I found that, but I know it was on the uh, Freedom of Information page for State of Mind. So I think it's something that, and maybe Eric can know something on that, but I'm not aware. Just bringing it up. I'm not making a big deal. I don't know. Just, I think it's a valid point to consider. So I guess that means that if something came in 48 hours prior to the agenda, you just wouldn't put it on till the next meeting. Or less than 48 hours. Less, that's what you, less than 48 hours. You just don't, well, really, you got to give staff time. I mean, they're not, they're not, they can't do it instantaneously. So right. if your agenda has gone out and within, I'd say, a week, you get something to be put on, probably wait till the next meeting. And, sorry. Yeah, we posted the agenda last week. We revised it to add the Ruby Road because... I had been holding off trying to figure out what agenda for it to sit yeah, on. Yeah, right, right, right. I don't know the specifics of, I understand the 48 hour, but uh, I don't think that it effectively precludes the commission from re from a re revising or amending an agenda. Well, that's true, because we can amend an agenda with a two thirds of the door, right? Right. And so that it's not a special meeting. We're, are we talking special meeting? We're we talking hybrid meeting? I think any meeting, any agenda. But no, we can always, we can always. Yeah, I, I printed out the agenda. It doesn't have that in right. mind. Right. Regular meeting, yeah. you can add to the agenda. Special meeting, you have to. Like, like, so you're in the you say special meeting or hybrid. Are okay. you okay. using hybrid and special? No, no, no. Special meeting. You can have a special hybrid meeting. Yeah, you can have a special hybrid meeting. Right. Okay. Right. Sorry. The, the hybrid is the method by which yeah. the meeting was delivered. Right. Correct. All right. Uh, yeah, and I know the Mark Branson stuff. Is that for any meetings? I thought that was more specific to public hearings, but. I guess that's for any meeting about the location. Well, I, I think his meeting. focus was on public. Yeah, hearings. right. No, that's fine. I don't want to hijack this conversation. If if somebody misunderstands the agenda and can't get to a public hearing, then it starts to add defects to the process. Absolutely. No, you're absolutely right. And mm -hmm. that, that, that was the reason he was such a stickler well, about the they get, they get delayed all the time because time. wrong addresses is the I know that the 48 hours applies to a virtual meeting, and that's because it, if there's a virtual only meeting, a member of the public 
has the right to petition an in-person component within 48 hours. I don't know what they petition if it was hybrid because both options are being accommodated. Um, but how much I, I, I'm just saying, yeah, this was something I stumbled across. I, and, you know, I, I wish I had paid more attention to where I was on, on the web when I was researching stuff. I didn't get one either. You just got to make sure that you know going forward we we make it uh, revision to a agenda like as I printed my agenda out to come here and when I was emailed it does not have item E on it right. as handy tonight does so it just probably should have had that which and I, I guess putting where we're going to hold the meeting on the agenda specifically that, that's not a big ask. Yeah, we can add it. It was on the that's calendar. I, I wasn't sure where it was going to be because we weren't sure how many yeah. people were going to show up okay. and there was conflict with Board of Ed. Okay. So we were right. trying to figure out with all the meeting tech and hybrid and this and that. All right. But yeah, that's not a hard thing to do. All right. I'm going to pick up James, then we're going to go online. We have two hands up. Go ahead. Um, two quick questions. And I'd ask if I email Mike, but I don't think I got a response. Do you guys, that regarding my application, do you guys have printed copies of all these submitted? application material on hand or do I need to kill the tree and bring I worry about bringing I think the tree's there. already dead. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to duplicate that effort because no, uh, it's a lot of paper. Um, we printed everything up. And then just as a procedural question, so if a public hearing is continued, um, is the floor open again at any meeting despite I guess what I'm trying to ask is next meeting, since it's a public hearing, is it open for discussion to the public again? No, I uh, asked attorney that. He said no. Now, why is that? Can you continue the public hearing? Because you, you can't just keep continuing, continuing. So basically, the applicant has a chance to rebut the um, items that were brought up the last few meetings. Um, and then that ends it. Right. You can't, but why can't the public continue to discuss? Because it would never end. It would never end. It would never end. It would never, it would end. never end. It's a 35 day window. The applicant can grant an extension, not the commission. I, I did want to mention that. that right. There seems to be a uh, sort of a, if, if there's a lot of public comment. Like, why would the town even consider this? The town has to consider it. We have an application. Yeah, we I, have to accept it with a zone change. That requires a public hearing. We have 35 days unless the applicant grants an extension. And that ties into that 65 day aggregate. After the public hearing closes, we have 65 days to make a decision. If we don't make a decision in 65 days, it's granted. I mean, there's, it isn't like an endless process. Otherwise, you a, a town could hold a landowner hostage forever, and that's not the intent. I, I, I really largely only ask questions because it's yeah. not being public right. comments. It's a fair that question. That but, I'm the only one singled out out of the hundreds of public comments by name. So just wondering if I had the opportunity to respond since the comments were posted by the applicant following the closing, but not the closing continuation. I mean, well, and their response posted three days ago. So the public hearing. There's the public hearing is still open. The public comment portion is not. If you were to if, if you were to submit a document in writing, it would still be part of the record. Uh, but if that's so the public comment where someone gets up and addresses the commission during the meeting, that portion is. But you can. Okay. It can if you send me something tomorrow, it'll go online. It would go to them, and the whole same thing would be there. It would be considered when we're right. making our decision. It's still right. part of the record because it's it's in there. In there. No, understood. I just wanted to do that. Thank no, you. No, certainly, you know, it's, uh, a lot of people had to talk in the in those three sessions for long periods of time. You know, many sometimes people came up more than once. Is, so we did our level best to make sure that you guys are doing great. Yep. Well, we haven't had our right. say yet. No, I, I get it. Right. I'm actually I'm hoping you guys get, <laughs> get it close. All right, Nick Tella. Nick Tala, 49 Myrtle, uh, with what comments were just said there kind of makes the last uh, meeting even more disappointing of how it was handled at the end. Um, but I won't get into it right now. Um, so the issue with the schedule, uh, not sure why it was meant for tonight when you had a plan, uh, board of education meeting. I don't know why there wasn't, you know, any attention given to that when you had an opening pretty much on Friday. I mean, there was people that were stuck between listening to the Board of Education and you guys. So you guys kind of put people in a bad situation there uh, to be able to pay attention to both and to be able to participate. 
Also want to let you know, uh, so I contacted the lawyer at uh, the FOIA for the state. Um, basically, can't do anything with the last uh, FOIA. It had pretty much everything to do with the planning and zoning situations. Uh, so I just wanted you guys to be aware that I did resubmit a FOIA. And day five will be on Friday. And, um, you know, if it's not fulfilled, it definitely will entertain the um, motion to keep on going with the complaint. Uh, being that it should be filled by then. Um, <laughs> just get a laugh, you know, parking lots and warehouses. That's all I got to say. Okay. okay. Kathy Demers. Hi, good evening. Kathy Demers, 48 Mason Road. Um, first of all, I'd just like to thank the commission members and the, um, the land use staff um, for all your work in the last few months. You guys certainly have a lot on your plate. So thank you. Um, a quick question, um, on the agendas um, under item C, applications for receipt, I was just wondering um, why we haven't seen uh, some preliminary information about upcoming uh, applications. I think that that information used to be put on that portion of the agenda, um, and it was helpful for just planning ahead. Um, especially even for things like the Conservation Commission, understanding what might be coming down the pike um, that we might be uh, involved in. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. So what, what, let's, let's the, talk about that. When we, make, okay. when we make the agenda, if there's yeah. an application for a public hearing or something that we can receive and doesn't go right to okay. the new business, it'll go there. Last meeting, we had two applications come in literally the day of the meeting. And so I, I can't amend the agenda inside of that window. It's just, it's just the timing. If it works, they'll go there. So those, those two applications came in, they, they will go on a future public hearing, but the date of receipt is determined by statute. So I, I don't have a lot of flexibility of when I show it, but yeah, normally if it came in and, we, and it was part of the agenda, it would go there. So would one of those, for instance, be like that cannabis business? That the cannabis came in after the agenda was okay. published. Okay. And, and so the statute says that it, the date of receipt is the next regular meeting. Okay. So if it comes in on a Monday at 11.59 p.m., it's received as of the Tuesday meeting, regardless of if it's on the agenda. So that's why I mentioned it during my staff report, and it wasn't on the agenda because it was post. But, but we, had, we have shown them that way in the past. It's just when we get them. We don't have a lot of flexibility in that. But right. yeah, we'll, we'll certainly obviously continue to put those in there as they come in. Okay. All right, any correspondence? No. Jay, staff report or discussion? Um, I don't uh, have anything additional that we, we haven't covered that I think is, is worth adding to the plate at this point. So moved. 9.38 uh, p.m. meeting adjourned.